Hi, it's Mark again. Not in the lab this time at VoIP Supply, but I'm here to talk a little bit about the Fanvil i30 door phone. The i30 is a compact device that combines a video door phone and lock control via switch, keypad, RFID card, and remote DTMF. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a switch and lock to the i30, and how to use an RFID card to trigger the lock. First, let's configure the i30 with an extension and the settings needed to operate the lock. For as feature-packed as the Fanvil i30 is, it's surprisingly easy to set up, and I'm going to show you how to do it quickly. First, log in with the default credentials of admin and admin. This brings you to the system information page. You can see that already I have line 1 registered. To register a line on the phone, go to line, for SIP count 1, enter your extension, a display name, authentication name, which will likely be your extension, your password for the PBX, the PBX IP address, which is a temporary system I have set up on Amazon, and click apply. If your settings were correct, you should see registered under your line status. You can have up to two accounts, but you only need one for basic operation. All right, let's set up the door lock. The EGS settings will allow us to use the keypad of the i30 or an RFID card to trigger an electronic lock. I found a basic electronic lock on Amazon and I have the phone configured in passive mode. Passive mode allows you to use PoE to power both the phone and lock. Fanville does recommend using an external 12 volt power source in active mode. These modes can be toggled with dip switches that I will show you later on. The majority of these fields are already in their default setting but here's what I changed to make it work. I set my remote password as 5555 for testing. Local password is also 5555 also for testing. Now the difference between the remote password and the local password is the remote password can be triggered from another extension to unlock the electronic lock attached to the phone. The local password is what's entered on the keypad of the i30. Entering the local password we also configured in the i30 will open the lock for 5 seconds, just like the RFID card and the momentary switch. The switch on duration is how long the lock will stay open for when it is triggered. We also have a remote code check length, which is how many digits our passwords will be, and we have the card reader enabled so we can use an RFID card to trigger the lock. Let's look at how to assign a card to the phone. Under EGS access is where we will add access rules. An access rule essentially is a user with an RFID card. RFID cards can be entered manually or they can be added by scanning with the phone itself. I already have myself added with a card ID and when I tap this to the phone I trigger my electronic lock. Here the RFID card we configured in the web interface can now open the lock by presenting it to the front of the i30. Now to edit an existing record, you select it, make your change, click modify. Or to create a new one, fill out your fields and click add. Now I'll show you how to add a card by scanning it with the phone. To add a new RFID card, go back to EGS settings, change your card reader working mode to card issuing, apply and then tap an RFID card or key fob to the phone. Now check back in EGS access and you'll see a new ID populate. Now you can assign that by checking it and filling out the rest of the information. Then you click add. To remove the card simply check it and click delete. An important feature is going to be the logging. If you go to EGS logs, you can now see every time someone accessed the door phone. Door lock is a quick way to temporarily trigger the lock. It should take about five seconds and it'll close. Next, I'll show you how to toggle the mode for the phone, whether passive or active, how to connect a switch and a lock. The Fanvil i30 can be configured in either active or passive mode. The difference is that active mode is used when powered by PoE and passive 
is when the power is provided by an external 12 volt DC power supply. To toggle passive mode, you must move the jumpers to connect pins 2 and 3, which are in the center. Active mode requires 1, 2, and 3, 4 pins jumper together. The i30 comes configured in passive mode out of the box. Fanville recommends using a 12 volt DC power supply as a best practice, but for this demonstration, I'm connected to a PoE switch. It's important to know that when the electric lock is activated, I noticed 15 watts of power consumption on the switch port, so keep an eye on your PoE budget if you're using PoE. Let's talk about connecting a lock and switch to the i30. The power and electronic lock connector has eight terminals, one through eight. Terminal one is to the far left and is used with terminal two for an external 12 volt DC power supply in passive mode. If you are connected to PoE like I am, these will not be used. Pressing the momentary switch opens the lock for five seconds, which is a setting we set in the web interface of the i30. And that is the introduction to the Fanville i30 door phone and its ability to control an electronic lock. I hope you found this video informative and useful. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any questions about the Fanville i30, visit VoIPsupply.com or give us a call. Once again, this is Mark, still not in the lab at VoIP Supply, wishing you a healthy future ahead. Take care.